Alprazolam, sold as Xanax, is the most widely prescribed anxiety and sedation drug in North America and the 12th most widely prescribed drug in the United States. It belongs to a class of drugs called benzodiazepines, named after their chemical structure of the combination of a benzene and diazepine ring. Benzodiazepines possess sedative, hypnotic, anxiolytic, anticonvulsive, muscle relaxant, and amnesic properties. Because of this, they're commonly used to treat alcohol dependence, seizures, anxiety disorders, panic, agitation, and insomnia. This video isn't going to be limited to Xanax, but to all drugs of the benzodiazepine class in general, and so it will include things like Valium, Ativan, and Clonopin. Despite being widely popular as a treatment for anxiety and insomnia, benzodiazepines have a number of dangers associated with them, particularly at high doses or long-term regular therapeutic doses. So in this video, I'll be outlining some of the basic neurobiology of how benzos work in the brain, and detail some of the potential problems uh, that can arise from misuse and what you can do to safely avoid those problems. Benzodiazepine drugs are often called anxiolytics, sedatives, or hypnotics. Anxiolytic means that it reduces anxiety, and hypnotic and sedative basically means that it puts you to sleep. Some of the more unwanted effects are behavioral inhibition, memory loss and blackouts, loss of motor coordination, and becoming a successful SoundCloud rapper. These drugs are able to do this through their unique pharmacological action on the brain. Benzodiazepines are positive modulators of gamma aminobutyric acid receptors, or GABA for short. GABA is the primary inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain. While molecules like dopamine and glutamate will excite neurons and increase their activity, GABA will do the opposite, slowing things down and shutting things off. GABA is used in almost all parts of the brain in some way or another, but multiple different versions of the receptor exist, and they all vary in their distribution and concentration within the brain. This is why benzodiazepines don't shut down the entire brain. Uh, only some GABA receptors are capable of binding to the benzodiazepine molecule. This is also why there's so many different benzodiazepine drugs, 68 at the making of this video. Uh, they can be designed to interact with GABA receptors in slightly different ways, but they all essentially do the same thing. How GABA activation produces things like sedation, relaxation, disinhibition, and reductions in anxiety depends on where in the brain GABA is affected and what receptor type it activates. For example, the alpha-1 receptor is highly concentrated in the cortex, the thalamus, and the cerebellum, and is largely responsible for sedation, amnesia, and anticonvulsion. Whereas the alpha-2 receptor is highly concentrated in limbic regions like the hippocampus and the striatum, and is mostly responsible for GABA's effects on anxiety. Now I'll go into a little bit of detail about some of the harms associated with long-term use. Neurobiology of addiction is complex and warrants a video all on its own, but the short version is that despite different drugs acting on different neurotransmitter systems in the brain, the common element behind all addictive drugs is their action on the mesolimbic dopamine system, brain areas like the ventral tegmental area and the striatum. These drugs, uh, when used for long enough, can induce changes to the physical structure of dopamine neurons in the VTA resulting in a strengthening of the reward pathway, making quitting the drugs that activate the neurons in that pathway all the more difficult. Some evidence shows that benzodiazepines can cause these changes to occur in the brain. When discontinuing the drug after long periods of use, withdrawal symptoms emerge, often in the form of heightened anxiety, insomnia, and stress. Withdrawal of drugs that act on GABA receptors is notoriously dangerous as one of the only class of drugs where if abuse is taken serious enough, withdrawal can cause seizures and sometimes death. How does withdrawal produce these effects? Well, when you take a drug for a long enough period of time, something called tolerance happens. Tolerance is when a drug doesn't work as well as it used to, and so you have to take more than you initially did to get the same effect. The biological root of this is the upregulation or downregulation of different molecules in the brain. Benzos are known to have a very steep tolerance curve developing quite quickly. However, the real danger in this is not that just the primary molecular system, like GABA, that the drug axon will change over time, but that everything else 
that molecular system interacts with will change as well. <clears throat> if you have a constant negative activity in the brain, inhibitory activity caused by drugs that activate GABA, uh, your brain will compensate by overproducing the molecular systems responsible for positive excitatory brain activity, namely glutamate and NMDA receptors. So what happens when you quit taking benzodiazepines? All these GABA receptors aren't active anymore. In fact, there's fewer of them than you started with, and you're left with way more NMDA receptors than are necessary than you had before, resulting in too much positive excitatory neuroactivity, something called excitotoxicity that can result in dead brain cells and seizures. The same process is proposed to happen with serotonin, dopamine, and brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This is why tapering off drugs is highly recommended. It allows your brain to slowly adapt and get back to its normal original state. Now it really shouldn't come as much as a surprise that a drug designed to reduce neural activity in the brain would result in cognitive impairment. It shuts off areas like the hippocampus, important for memory, and the cortex, important for attention and complex problem solving. The real question is whether or not this impairment returns once you're off the drug, or whether there is long-term permanent cognitive decline. Research on the long-lasting permanent effects of benzodiazepine abuse on cognitive abilities is unfortunately inconsistent, but the general trend is towards impairment. Many behaviors that have been shown to be affected are long-term memory, concentration and attention, hand-eye coordination, spatial abilities, reaction time, and general intelligence. In a meta-analysis of long-term benzodiazepine use on cognition, a meta-analysis is basically a, a special type of statistical analysis that compares the effects of a whole bunch of studies done on a particular topic. They concluded that the findings of this study highlight the problems associated with long-term benzodiazepine therapy and suggest that previous benzodiazepine users would be likely to experience the benefit of improved cognitive function after withdrawal. However, the reviewed data did not support full restitution of function, at least in the first six months following cessation, and suggests that there may be some permanent deficits or deficits that take longer than six months to completely recover. Several studies over the years have shown that long-term benzodiazepine abuse can result in permanent cognitive impairment, which isn't good. So you might be thinking, well, does this apply to me? What if I'm taking the normal therapeutic dose for like a year? What if I take triple the regular dose for a month? Well, we can look at a couple individual studies here for insight. Gorenstein, Burnick, Pompey and Marcoricus in 1995 studied low-dose benzodiazepine users who had been taking the drug for up to five years. A 10-month abstinence test of digit symbol substitution, digit span, and immediate and delayed recall revealed significant impairment compared to healthy controls. Uh, Tata in 1994 found that chronic benzodiazepine users of therapeutic doses who were tested at six months abstinence had delayed memory, psychomotor, visual motor, and visual conceptual abilities compared to healthy controls. Now, despite these grim results, some work has shown positive recovery. Sakal and Power in 88 found recovery after four weeks, Towing in 95 in about a year, and Bergman in 89 partial recovery in about four to six years. A general rule of thumb can be applied to long-term drug use, and that is that when a person engages in long-term drug use, the higher the dose, plus the longer the period the drug is taken, plus the earlier you take it in your pre-adult brain development, the greater risk you run of permanent brain damage and cognitive impairment. Because of benzodiazepines action on alpha-2 GABA receptors in the basal ganglia, an area important for psychomotor control, it has powerful effects on coordination and muscle relaxation. And this offers great potential for physically injuring oneself. Uh, this is particularly bad in the frail and elderly who, when taking benzodiazepines, experience much higher rates of car accidents, falls, and hip fractures. A number of reports have shown that long-term use of benzodiazepines puts the elderly at risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. One thing that benzodiazepines do is they interfere with memory formation in the hippocampus. And so if this happens long enough, uh, the idea is that it may contribute to some sort of dementia or pathology. However, benzodiazepines are also used to treat symptoms that are contributing factors to Alzheimer's disease, like stress and insomnia. So it's not really clear if benzodiazepines lead to a worsening of the condition, or if people who end up getting prescribed benzodiazepines are already at a high risk to begin with. In this case, 
benzo use wouldn't be a contributing factor to the disease, but instead a red flag that someone might be at risk of developing it. So there's a general rule of thumb that comes to drug use, and it goes like this. Don't take something every day unless you're willing to take it for the rest of your life. This speaks to the ideas of tolerance, addiction, withdrawal, and potential brain damage. In order to reduce the harms associated with either long-term use or abuse of benzodiazepines, here's a, a list of some recommendations from various clinician groups and health authorities. Never use for longer than six weeks. Never exceed the lowest effective dose. Quitting should be done through slow tapering over the course of several weeks. Never mix benzodiazepines with other substances, especially alcohol and be aware of motor impairments when driving or operating heavy equipment. But more importantly, don't trust me, I'm just some guy on the internet, uh, so talk to your doctor for safer alternatives for dealing with anxiety and insomnia, and if you're interested, I'll put some references in the reference bar for publicly available links to safe benzodiazepine use guidelines. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you thought it was informative, please share, like, and subscribe, and as always, have a great day.